Wow, welcome to AUA. It's so wonderful to see you here. Um, I, I just, I, my name is Brian Ellison. I'm the provost at, at this institution. It's an absolute pleasure, privilege. It's a privilege for me to be here. And I've had a long career in higher education. And um, it's been a privilege all along the way. From the day I went and sat in that seat where you're sitting right now, 30 years ago. Well, no, it was, that's being nice. I'm sorry. 40 years ago, uh, no, more than 40 years ago. Continually, uh, continually complimenting myself, right? Um, knowing nothing, having no idea, just knowing that I wanted to be in that seat. That's it. And uh, trying to and getting on this voyage of discovery. What's what we have to offer you is incredibly special, right? We are the only American university, American-style educational system in Armenia. We are in English. That's good for you for all kinds of reasons, which I can explain. But I just want to say, why, why American? What does the word American mean on that? It doesn't mean that America is the greatest country or anything like that. But we do have a system of higher education that's constructed on the liberal arts. And do you know what the liberal arts are? And that's a rhetorical question I'll ask, it, I'll ask and answer myself. So Thomas Jefferson, one of the founders of our country, the person who founded the University of Virginia um, and the first public universities in the world, the first public university in the world was the University of North Carolina, um, called it an art in the education of liberal society that a liberal arts education was an art in the education of, a, of liberal society. And what he meant by that is we had to teach people um, the responsibilities of being free. The whole idea, beginning with the Greek trivium and the Roman quadrivium and the liberal arts tradition in the United States is that freedom bears responsibilities. And that in order to be free, you had to know a lot about a lot of different things. And so that's what we try to do here. We try to give you the broadest, most comprehensive education within the context of whatever, whatever particular major you've chosen. But breadth, breadth is our hallmark. And we hope that makes you a better citizen. We hope that gives you all kinds of different kinds of skills that will enable you to be incredibly successful in life. We here hope, we here hope to be the most transformative institution in Armenia. We hope to produce the leaders, the business leaders, the civic leaders, the, pol the politicians of the future. That's our goal. Impact. We don't want to make, if you're majoring in business, we don't want to get, make you a good employee for a business. Right? I mean, that's what most people do. You've got to get a bachelor's degree in business and, that, and at the end of the day, you're going to be a good employee. We want to make you a business leader. We want to make you someone who leads the economy in this country. And it's an incredible opportunity, an incredible opportunity for me, an incredible privilege. And I hope you see things that way too. So welcome. Um, you're, you could not be in better hands uh, than with our, our beloved Director of Admissions. And I hope you have a wonderful day. So welcome, thank you very much, thanks. Okay. So, uh, Mika, I'm going to say a few things in Armenian first. Ofker menak kosmen hayr niat zetker barzats nomek. Yete duk menak hayr nek kosmen khanchumem akan jakal ner zer koh kahan mek vor karbanak tarpan tuna desek. Vor de vies esor him nakan ma angren an kosmen mikic hayr patak nekan. Okay, so um, I'm Irina Zaravian with the Office of Admissions. I would like everyone to give a big clap to Mary Artunyan. And all of my amazing volunteers, guys, stand up for helping put together this open house. You all might know my Munatik Datavik, right? The one with attitude. She's out with COVID. We're not, we're negative, we're okay, we don't have COVID. Another one of my amazing staff members just had her gallbladder removed. So we were able to pull off an open house with so, so many people. Um, thanks to the efforts of everyone here. So thank you volunteers, thank you staff. So the agenda, you guys all have packages with you. Jishta, some you got on this did when I do home right? These are things that you guys need to be looking at throughout the day, so please open those. And you'll see that you have a very pretty colorful agenda. And this is what you should look at throughout the day, all right? 
So the list of events that we have, right now I'm going to talk to you about AUA and the admissions process. Right? It's very strange in comparison to other universities in Armenia. So we're going to explain everything um, and how it, how it works here. Financing your education for parents. Ola Mikish Mataho Patsmer. Tuition needs. Bartavichar needs. Tanga, right? But we have amazing financial aid. Um, and that's something that we're going to talk to you about. But here's the pipe. Make some Nagar on lunch, eh? Guys, you have to apply for financial aid at the same time as you're applying for admission. Chenkan Kumun or Divan, we do it at the same time, okay? Vaka Vuketam and Shindasetsi, okay, you guys? So the camera is the witness that you heard me say that. At 2 o'clock and at 2.45, all of our students, applicants, are going to go off to program sessions. So if you know what your preferred program is, you go to that particular room. So no, no. Aranzin Zerhamar is make a higher of a costume. Um Aranzin Zerhamar Q and A unit. Q and A in China Shalakun. Question question and answer, me of seems to have processes. Fast the bear with the Nazi, hide that up in here. Good. So we're doing a question and answer. It's a no name, countrymen, Burjama Yerkusin, in Zmianak, uh Ed Hart Hart Say Hamar. Then at 2.45, we have our Open Education Department. Anna Heath is here from Open Education. They're going to talk to you about entrance exams, Von's Patras, and how to prepare for those exams, right? Because it's not easy. Then at 3.15, we're simplifying your lives. We're going to give you a lot of tips on how to complete your application, how to write your essays, and how to prepare for an interview if you're invited to one. Starting at around 2.45, our students, so we have our uh, student union represented here by Anna and by Hasmi, um, as well as many of our students, they're going to be there to talk to you about Vonsa Ewing Usano Dine, right? If you look at the students now, they look kind of nervous and stressed. It's not me, it's midterm season at AUA. So it's really important that you guys talk to them and get their tips on studying at AUA. Um, and then we'll have the Open Education Department that will talk to you about uh, you know, the, the various courses they offer. will be downstairs as well, and financial aid will be in their offices to answer any questions you guys have. Who is competitive? El competition, All right, who's going to take part in one of the competitions? So we have four, three different competitions. You might win a hoodie. Won't say how some higher. Hoodie. Okay. So we've got some great prizes. Make sure to look at what competition is. Those start at 5.30 p.m. So make sure you join and the rooms are located directly on the agenda. So, who's going to go to Banak soon? So if you're going to get called into the military, uh, let's say in January because you graduated earlier, we're going to work with our undergraduate admissions committee to make every effort to expedite your decisions. Right? We're going to try to get your decisions before you actually go to serve. All right? Thank you for your service. Thank you for protecting our country. Um, now, why AUA? So, why are you guys here? Why do you want to study at AUA? So, a couple of people give me an answer. All right, go. I want to be a future leader. Let's see if you can catch. Good. If you can catch, you can be a leader. Yeah, I can't hear you. I hate you, but okay, I'll give you a chocolate too. <laughs> right, AUA does have amazing study abroad options for our students, the ones that perform the best. Uh, but remember, Armenia is the best country in the world. I'm saying this in front of the camera. Armenia is the best country in the world. You all want to stay here and help the country progress. Anyone else? Here. That's like meat mashed up, but okay, tell me. Guys, you guys get to throw chocolates. Don't, don't give it to Nadesha, she'll eat them all. Alright, tell me, but it's Barta Asa. Because it's the best in Armenia. Because it's the best in Armenia. Pasta and not past. Right? Okay, so. First and foremost is the accreditation. Dr. Ellison, um, our provost, 
mention that you guys are coming into an American education. Right now our accreditation is with the organization that is listed up there. Who wants to try to read that? Oh, I was on Yes, it shows us. I'm going to make it, make it the young people start to read. Yeah. Love to talk more. Wask Senior College and University Commission. Gosh, to talk about it. Are you ready? Wuskuk. Can everyone say Wuskuk? Chase Boss over us. It's all good. And this organization credits more than 200 universities throughout the U.S., um, mostly in um, sort of the western uh, side of the U.S. We received our accreditation in 2015, um, and we have it through 2024, at which time I'm confident it will be extended again for a very long time. I hear a lot of rumors. Yeah, no, don't believe those lies. I don't know what, who, who's, who's doing that. We have our accreditation, and we're also licensed by the Ministry of Education. So some facts and figures about the university. So how many students do we have in total? Of Carlite and Hedwig's Disney. Yeah, I can't see it either. I'm hoping you can see it. What is that number? Yana Donfitches thought he's still. Yana Bana is spotted up. Guys, can I actually ask one of you guys to take these chocolates up to that floor? So Yan Chunera Nanin And anyone who answers up from there, make it Garva. Felix says, Wait, wait, take these two girls. Okay. All right, so we have about 2,064 students. Do we have more undergraduates or do we have more graduates? Undergraduates. I love you guys, I really do. Um, we have 267 amazing faculty working at AUA, and right now I see Suzanne here, who's part of our faculty. Do I have anyone else? Not at the moment. So today you're going to get to meet a lot of the faculty during program presentations. Diversity is an amazing part of AUA. You're coming in with other students, right? So Louis, où es-tu? Bonjour. So Louis is from the French College. I don't know him personally. He came yesterday for a tour. And he's from France, and he's interested in studying at AUA. Why would it be beneficial for you guys to study with someone from France? What does that do to you? You learn French. I have so many French friends, I never learned French. Yes, be better than me, good. Speak. Dablin's sister. Tell me. Communication, diversity of opinions. Plus, Louis is really fellow, he knows how I study Lavna. Okay. We have an amazing library. You guys all hopefully saw it. Um, we've got a lot of great research centers that will help make your education a little bit more practical. We have 5,000 plus alumni. Why do you care about alumni? Why is that important? When an alumni opens a business, who do you think they come to when they want to hire? They're coming after our students, right? So that network is going to be really important for you. What is an alumni? What is an alumni? Oh, Fassi, translate it for me. Don't answer in Russian. It's someone who studies at AUA and then graduates. Okay? What does this number mean right here? And what is up with me and my Russian today? What is that? What is that? What is an admission rate? Uh-huh. All right, guys, I want someone from up there. What is an admission rate? Microphone and the check. Go make a pot last funny. Microphone a garden. Oh, okay, then I then screen. A percentage of students that get accepted for undergraduate studies uh, and this data is um, as my psyche for the fall of 2021. Okay, uh, that's the percentage of applicants who get accepted uh, and this data here shows that for fall 2021, 61.8% uh, of applicants got accepted for undergraduate studies. Stand up for a second. Yes, for sure. Take your hair back. <laughs> Why are you wearing a Yale University shirt to an AUA open house? <laughs> 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 so 
Someone give her an AUA t-shirt to put on. Check out. <laughs> okay, so 61.8% admission rate. That means that not everyone gets admitted to AUA, and this is really important. You are your guarantor, which means you have to work really hard on your applications to get in, and we'll talk about how you can do that. Alumni employment is a really big part of why you should want to come to AUA. So the majority of students after they graduate are working. So, since good Tim. So 58% work immediately after graduating. 6% open their own businesses, right? They're self-employed. 12% are studying and working after graduation, so they might be pursuing a master's degree and also working. 16% are studying alone, which leaves 5% looking for jobs and 2.5% other. The other could be they're serving in the military, they could be like Marina, not fat but pregnant. Um, so there's a lot of different things. So the majority coming out of a AUA are ultimately able to find a job, which is great. Um, now, Asmi. This is Hot and Anna. Come on up. They're going to talk to you about one of my favorite parts of AUA, which is our student union. What is this? Hello, everybody. It is our pleasure to be here to see you all and to present Student Affairs. So, in Student Affairs, we love working with students, and our aim is to create opportunities for students to learn, grow, develop their knowledge and skills that can be used inside and outside of AUA in different aspects of their lives. So now, we will talk a bit more about the services that we provide. So here on this slide, you can see career services. So this is part of Student Affairs. In career services, on one hand, we first of all help our students to understand what they want when they search for a job, to determine their interests, to determine their abilities, and also to get them know what they need to know in order to be successful in their search for a job. We have one-on-one -on -one consultations about the job search tools, about how to prepare a CV, how to prepare a cover letter, and to know some interview te techniques that can help them to succeed. And on another hand, career services gaps the bridge between the employee, um, employers and our students and alumni. So, workshop, uh, sorry, um, we have different workshops, different activities, job fairs, employer days, during which potential employers meet our students, they get to know each other, and also we share job opportunities and internship opportunities with our students. Now about the student union. Actually, student union is the place where the Office of Student Affairs is located, and this is the most fun place. We have three uh, rooms that are at our students' disposal. We have a conference room where students usually have their club meetings. Our student council has their own meetings there and their discussions. We have a study room. I saw some of you actually today during the tour. So we have a study room where students gather, they do their homework, they do their group projects or group assignments that they have. And next to the study room, we have the hangout area. That's what we call. This is perhaps one of the noisiest places on our campus, in a good sense, of course, because this is the place where students usually gather, they have time with each other, they sing, we have a piano there, we have games, they play games, and this is the place where they just relax between their classes or after their classes. Now, these are the services that Student Affairs provides, and my colleague Anna will take over. Thank you. Thank you, Hasmin Chan. Hi, everyone. My name is Anna. I'm from the Math and Writing Center. I'm so glad to see you all here. And there is maybe one thing I want you to remember, guys. You have full support to succeed in your studies at AUA. When I say full support, I do mean that. Whether it's uh, your studies or any psychological issue that you face or a disability that you might have, you have full support to succeed here. 
the Math and Writing Center, uh, for example, will help you with any math or writing related issues. You have an assignment, you have a complex math problem to solve, you come to the Math and Writing Center, you sit one-on-one -on -one with our consultant, and you ask your questions, you get guidance, you do your homeworks, you get prepared for your midterms and exams. You have an essay, a paper, a writing assignment, you don't know how to handle that. Again, you come to the Math and Writing Center, you sit one-on-one -on -one with our professionally trained consultants and you get guidance uh, to just complete your assignment effectively. If you think that you are dealing with stress, anxiety, depression, there is a family issue, something that prevents you from being productive during your studies, you can come meet our counselors, psychologists, who will help you to overcome the stress, clear confusion, and just get through uh, any difficulties that you are facing. If you have a disability, any kind of that, you again approach us and we will find reasonable accommodation for that disability. So once again, maybe AUA is unique in this regard. I don't think any other uh, Armenian universities will offer this, but you have all of this kind of support to help you be successful. All you need is to be willing to learn well and to seek help. We are here to help. Thank you for coming. Thanks so much for this. And now a little bit more about non-academic part of student life. Um, yes, thank you. So we spoke about career services. Now student council. So student council is the student representative body. These are students or active students um, who aim to raise all the problems and challenges that the students might face. And also through the activities and events that they organize, they try to build the spirit of AOA students and to help them to organize their own events and activities. About student clubs, so three weeks ago we had our club fair. Every year at the beginning of the academic year we have a club fair where the confirmed clubs present what they want to do with their club. So I know that almost all of you have hobbies and just to name few of our clubs we have a tennis club, we have music club, we have book club, we have board games club, we have, I don't know, drama club, so many clubs. So this shows how diverse our student community really is. So we hope when you become students, you will open your clubs or join our clubs. And about study abroad and international student services. So these are this is the unit of student affairs that um, offers help to those who want to study abroad for a semester or for a year and they guide our students through the application process and also they, through various activities and events, help students from abroad to get integrated into AOA community and they organize tours throughout Armenia and different events so that they can meet AOA students. So, this much about student affairs, thank you very much. Please know that it will be our honor to have you as our students, and good luck. Okay, um, now I want to invite our double Shurjana Arts alum, Anna, who's going to talk about what's epic at epic. That was a bad joke, I'm so sorry. Hello everyone, so welcome to AUA. As a double graduate of AUA, I can exactly feel what you are feeling right now, but believe me, the, the, this is worth the effort. The very first day that you will join AUA, your life will never be the same. It will be completely changed to a positive direction. So now about EPIC, very short and sweet. So who wants to make money? Raise your hand. Come on guys, you, this is why you are here. 
So, um, and who wants to create value for their communities? And who would like to own a startup or a business? Of course you do. This is why you are smart. And so EPIC is the startup incubator that you can join whenever you will be a student. At EPIC you will receive 40, 14 uh, week of intensive program where you receive mentorship and advising from industry leaders and top professionals in the startup ecosystem of Armenia. You will have access to all of the alumni that want to support you to build your businesses and also you will have 24 hours and 7 days a week access to EPIC. And EPIC is the only place in the university that is open every day, every time. So whenever you are a student, even before you are a student, you can join EPIC. Just go to our website, epic.aua.am, and learn about us. I am Anna, representing EPIC, and I'll be ready to answer your questions there. Thank you very much, and have a nice day today. Thank you, Anna. OK, can you hear me? Um, who do I have that's not from Yerevan? I can't say it. So for those of you guys not from Yerevan, this is a really important slide. This is our insanely swank, amazing, gorgeous residence center. Okay, so students who are admitted to AUA um, and study and are from outside of Armenia, Louis, or from the regions, the rest of you, you can actually apply to stay at the residence center in Zorakuk. It's about a 25 minute walk. If you walk like me, it'll be about 15 minutes. If you walk like your Thothiks, it might be about a 45 minute walk, okay? Um, it is, uh, it's got space for about 56 students. It's all double occupancy rooms, which means you have to learn how to live with someone. You get to do laundry by yourselves. You get to cook for yourselves. You get to become independent, isn't that exciting? So no one here will be able to do that. Asani mana. Um, now about the programs. So we have six different programs that we're offering at AUA. I'm going to ask you a question. So if you agree with the statement, I want you to raise your hand. Which program should you choose? The one that's easiest to get into. Raise your hand. Okay, not the right answer. Second. The ones where AUA target scores are closest to my scores. Mary, Matthew, on each other's step, make a bottle on this one. Okay, so no, you should not pick your program based on the targets, uh, based on your scores, right? The one that I prefer. Okay, upstairs, I'm looking at you. All right. Whatever my parents tell me. I'm going to come talk to you guys later. All right, so the right answer is you, because you're going to be spending the next four years of your life studying in a program, and this is your future. We get a lot of applicants saying, can I change my major after a year? Ada, if you want to change your major, apply to that major, right? There's no easy admission into AUA. It's not easier to get into one program so that you can then transfer to another program. Apply to the one that your, your heart is closest to. So these are our programs. With a raise of hands, who's interested in business? Okay. English and communications. Computer science. Engineering sciences. Data science, <laughs> politics and governance. Old Zeshavarza. Why did I? Mean, half of the people didn't raise their hands. Who's undecided? Old Chugiti. Mary, you're not the only one who's there. Hinti, I think we're starting. Davai, Eka. All right. We also, surprise, have a new program we're launching this year. What do we think it is? Nursing. Oh, I guess it's not a secret if you know it. That's right. But it's for people who have graduated from Michnak Gark, the Brots, for nursing. So it's not for any of you guys, all right? 
So those are our programs, and the education structure at AUA is very different. You're taking five courses typically per semester, typically 40 courses over the course of your four years. 60% of them, give or take, are going to be in your major. 40% are outside of your major. And the work studies and our student ambassadors sitting here said, So we answer that. Did I, did I do my homework assignment correctly? I passed that message, okay. But the part that's outside of your major is related to general education. And I would like to invite one of our most beloved faculty, Suzanne, who's gonna to talk to you about what Gen Ed is. can't wait to see you all as students. And, um, and for the parents who are here, welcome. We're so happy to um, have your faith in us to help guide your, your children. Um, so, as Arena said, there are two parts to your education. There are courses in your major, and it's great to see that many of you have decided what you want to study, what, what you want to focus on for your, um, for your degree. Um, but there's a second half to what kinds of courses you're gonna take at AUA. And those are the general education courses. And as, as Dr. Um, uh, Ellison talked about a little earlier, you're gonna get a liberal arts degree um, from AUA. I know you all will, because I know you're all gonna come here and I know you're all gonna do really well. So when you, have, when you come here to study, um, the liberal arts degree is a degree made up of two equally important parts. And there's the part in your major and there's the general education part. And the, the point of general education is to broaden your perspective. Um, so if you're gonna be a computer scientist, why in the world would you need to take an art class? Anybody wanna guess? Oh, come on, use your imaginations. Yes, I see someone back there. Why would you need to take an art class if you're gonna be a, a computer scientist or a data scientist? Stand up, we'll get you the microphone. In the middle back, right there. Bossy, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this is gonna be good. Good girl. Uh, I'm a 3D artist and a programmer, so I need to learn both programming and art. Yes, you do. And fantastic, fantastic. You will, you will study art. You'll study maybe the history of art if you're interested in that. Because it will make you a better 3D designer, a better computer scientist. Um, a data scientist, why would they want to study social science? Does everybody know what social science is? Things like psychology, sociology, anthropology. Um, so uh, the social sciences study how people interact in the world. So if you're a data scientist and you've got a lot of engineering courses, math courses um, to study, why would you want to study the social sciences as well? Yeah, why? So, well, yes, it's definitely great for communication so you can express yourself. But a data scientist has to understand the basics of how society interacts with one another. Uh, to apply the ideas in your major, you need to have a nice, broad education. So here's the point. Is there another slide? Okay. So here's the point. You're going to take courses in general education in two areas. The foundation courses are the courses that every student at AUA has to take. Um, and, and you'll see them listed here. Freshman seminar is a course that helps you learn to think critically, to help you write academically, to help you understand your role in, um, in a democracy, in Armenia, how to become a leader, how to think about problems and solving problems. You'll take courses in civil defense and first aid. You'll also take physical education. Everyone has to take four semesters of physical education as an AUA student. In second year, you'll take Armenian language and literature. And in junior year, you'll take Armenian history. Those last two courses are taught in Armenian. It may be the last time you'll have a chance to take real solid um, academic courses in your native language. 
And if you're an international student, Louis, don't worry. We offer them in English as well for those people who aren't from Armenia and didn't get their um, secondary education in, in, in Armenia. Um, so those are the foundation courses that all students take. And then here's the part where you have choices. You'll all, no matter what your major is, you'll all take courses in the arts and humanities, in the social sciences, and the quantitative sciences. All of you will take three courses in each of those um, areas, and you get to choose from hundreds of offerings. So we have courses in the arts and humanities that are everywhere from arts, languages, um, uh, what else, music, um, poetry, all kinds of different courses in the arts and humanities to broaden your perspective. We have tons of courses in the social sciences. Um, again, as I mentioned, those are sociology, psychology, anthropology, um, even economics. Um, if you're a business major, you're gonna have to take economics, but for those of you who are not, you're welcome to take courses in economics to understand how the economy works. Um, all of you, even you English and communication students, will take quant science courses. These are courses that are about the sciences. So there are courses in the living world, like biology, um, and then there are courses in the built world, like what we, what we make, like computer, science, uh, computer networks. Um, we have a course, engineering for non-engineers. Um, so again, if you're not an engineering major and you want to understand how things work, we have courses for you. So there are hundreds of breadth courses offered every semester, and we help guide you in how to take three, um, uh, take it courses in all three of these areas. So that's general education. Um, we have a general education office, we have advisors, and we're here to help you broaden your perspective beyond your major and um, get a liberal arts education. Thank you. Now the fun stuff. No, I lie. Suzanne, yours was fun. Now the boring stuff. So applying to AUA, who's in 12th grade? Everything I'm talking about today applies to you only. As of next year, who's in grade 10 and 11? We're changing our complete application system for the next year. So this year, 12th graders are going to apply this way. Next year, I have no idea what it's going to be. <laughs> if you're going to a Russian school and you're in 11th grade, then you're applying this year. Maybe next year's application is better. So for those of you that are applying this year, this is going to be the online website. Who has already started an application? Who has not started an application because they're waiting for to take their exam? Okay, all of you, Sakhalekan, wrong. Nietu, no. You start your application as soon as possible. You do not wait to take your exams. Do you want me to say it one more time for Farzuni? Did we understand? I I can not Chen Haskell. Joe remember Chen Haskell. You guys are looking at me like this. It's not a good look. So we have three deadline dates. Again, this is for this year's applicants. December 1st. Oh my god, but my SAT is on December 4th at each time to up to What does that mean? You can still apply. Why? No, I'm definitely not generous. Talk to my children. Because uh, we, on our website, we've listed that certain exams, including the December 4th SAT and a ACT, I don't remember what the dates are, the same thing for the March 1st deadline, that those exams will still apply for those deadlines. But you have to submit your application on or by the deadline, okay? Now, last year, we always have a few people, young news people make that start the application the day of the deadline. And then, we love you, Tom, right? And then you don't actually manage to submit your application by the deadline. You're one minute late, you're two minutes late. What's gonna happen? The admissions committee this year 
has said not one application submitted after the deadline will be considered. So if you submit your application at 12.01 on December 2nd, mi rope, ans, are you gonna be for early or regular? Regular. How do we avoid this? Wait, 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 this is an easy question, guys. Come on, talk to me. How do we avoid this? You start filling it now and you submit it when? Before the deadline. Okay, I want us to say this all together. Ready? Before the deadline. Make sure you have your cards. Come on. Say it. One, two, three, go. Before the deadline. Not all of you are getting into AUA based on that. I'm telling you that now. Okay, why is, what does this mean? Pending space availability. What does that mean? If there is space. So we have, we're gonna go through the numbers of students we'll be admitting and enrolling this year, but let's say you're a phenomenal student applying to business, but we've already admitted everyone. Can you get admitted? No, you're not gonna get in. So don't wait until that final deadline. Our application requirements include the application. It includes English language proficiency. It includes math. What two programs is math optional for this year? EC? And BAPG, teach us that. I, I thought he said BAB. So politics and governance and, uh, and English and communications. For you guys, math is going to be optional this year. You need to graduate high school. Just far gone and awesome with them. You need to pay an application fee. Yes. Oh no, I can do some body since makeup. Um, and an interview if you're invited to one. Okay? So those are the requirements and the selection process. So let's look at the numbers very, very quickly. How many students are we en enrolling this year in politics and governance? 40. Okay? How many in English and communications? Right, so you guys see the breakdown. Data science this year is bringing in 60 students, engineering 30, CS 90, PG 40, ENC 90, and business 160. All right, so keep those in mind. The way that universities who pra that practice holistic admissions, how do they make decisions? So for us, the first thing that we do is once you submit your application, we actually do a technical review to make sure that you've done everything correctly. We then forward all of the applications to the undergraduate admissions committee. These are members of our faculty. No, that's a joke. We don't say who they are, right? So that's, uh, that's, a very, that's not information we, we give, it's confidential. Then they look at the applications holistically. So they look at everyone who's applied and they say, okay, Bogos has this, Petros has this, Bartui has this, and based on that and based on the numbers, they make decisions. Our statuses are sent within 12 weeks. So student ambos, did anyone get interviewed twice? Okay, which means what happened after your first application? What happened to you? You, who did two interviews? What happened after the first interview? She got denied. Ooh. So she got denied, but then what did you do? What happened that, so after a denial, you reapplied, right? And so she was able to apply with the, I assume, the second or third deadline. The first deadline, and then you applied the same year or the following year? The following year, okay, so she took a gap year and applied again. So our decisions are sent within 12 weeks, and they're sent by email. We're not sending it to your parents, we're not sending it to your 55 different email addresses you for whatever reason have. We're sending it to the email that you use to register your aim.aua.am account, okay? The selection process is, as I said, holistic. So what are the factors the admissions committee looks at? So one is your application. Don't do um, sort of a, a bad job completing your application. Make sure there are no spelling mistakes. Make sure there are no grammar issues. I see a lot of people taking photos. Everything is in here in much prettier, better resolution than any photo you're going to take with your phone, okay? So they're looking at your GPA. 
Yeah, so study well. Dasar, dasar, antiner. Dasar, mekir, dasar, antiner. For those of you in 10th and 11th grade, try to bring up your grades. Do as best you possibly can. We're looking at your English. You might have 110 on your TOEFL, but you might come to an interview and your English might be so poor that you might not get admitted based off of that. So keep that in mind. We're looking at everything. Math, if you're submitting it, um, required for four of our programs, optional for two. Extracurricular and volunteer activities, also um, part of the selection process. So the, the admissions committee wants people who are active. So who's active? You can check on them. What do you guys do outside of school? Community work. Do you guys want to hear a fun story about me? It's a lot of women. So I came to Armenia 19 years ago with an organization called the Armenian Volunteer Corps. Guess where I'm going to work next? I'm going to the ABC, the Armenian Volunteer Corps, Corpus Thanorin, a Yule. Um, and volunteering has a lifelong impact. So the more that you guys do today, 20 years later, they might be hiring you as their Thanorin. So this is a really important part with Deva Kampetchi. You're not volunteering for your AUA application, you're volunteering for a better future for yourself. We also have a Volunteers League at AUA, so get active. But until you're at AUA, make sure that you're active now as a, a high school student. Dynasty, it's hot not a good news. Um, we're looking at essays. There are a lot of companies now that are paying, that you're paying, Anka Pumarek Dalis, to write your essays. Worst mistake you could do. Those essays have to be written by you. But today we have a session by one of our faculty who's going to talk to you about how to uh, write a better essay and the interview, right? If you're invited to an interview, that's a very important part of that process. We're looking for students who are passionate, who want to be at AUA, and they're interested in studying. If you're lazy and if you're just here because you want to have an AUA diploma, you're not going to do well here. That's a really important thing. We're looking for people who are not going to only be focused on their academics. We want you to work on enhancing your community, whether that's at AUA or outside of AUA. We want to make sure that you can succeed. Guys, is it easy to study at AUA? No. It's midterm season. <laughs> you asked them a month ago, they'd have said, no, it's okay. No, no. The boys over there, how is it? Dima Nume? Okay. Sense of curiosity and desire to learn. This is really important. You have to keep asking questions. So those of you who have that will succeed at AUA, and obviously those of you that are individual, right? We want to hear your voice. We don't want to hear what you think we want you to say. We want to hear what you want to say. I think I said that correctly. Suzanne, did I say that correctly? I did, okay. <laughs> now entrance exams, very quickly. Um, so we have uh, two different exams. English language proficiency is required of all applicants. Either the TOEFL or the IELTS. If you're a native English speaker, you can apply for the uh, English language proficiency test waiver. If you have a friend who's in the Army and started serving August 2021 or earlier, then we're doing internal assessments for only them. At Mekus Vampire and Tarkman, and should I give them gracings on his love Tarkmanets? And Usan Ogner, Tim Ogner, we're August this year, Kazakhstan make its spots at the Mavali Shoot. I can't say that. Grace, you translated that, right? I'm moving on. I did a bad job with that translation. And then for math, the SAT or the ACT, right? Again, ENC and PNG applicants, that is optional for you. These are our target scores. Do not take a picture because it's all over here, okay? Um, so these are our target scores. You'll notice that we had slight changes to our target scores for um, the, which program? One of our programs. Business. Business went up to 650. These are our automatic denial scores. So if you take the TOEFL and you get a 67 or lower, or if you take the SAT and you get a 590 or lower, you change this on, what do we do? But that, but the status letter won't say bye. It'll say something else, okay? So make sure you guys study really hard for these exams. Now, more important than the targets and the automatic denials is the entering class profile. So these are the averages of the students who were admitted this year. Who's a freshman? All right, so these kids who are now raising their hands, this is their average uh, test scores. So what program has the highest TOEFL? Which one? Data science. 
I want you to remember that. Highest IELTS, which program? Computer science. Okay, now Dean Mortner. I don't want the work studies to answer. I want uh, the student ambush. I want you. SAT. Who's the highest? Data science. And ACT. Who's the highest? Politics and governance. That's a surprise. Okay, so this is really important information, but now I want us to look at something. This is the average admission rate, right? So you'll see data science has some of the highest scores, but about 74% of the applicants who applied to data science were admitted. That's because the people applying to data science were very, very strong. The people applying to the other programs were also very strong, but that's something for you to keep in mind, okay? So these are our average admission rates per program. There are no guarantees. Um, so there is absolutely no specific formula that if you meet, you'll definitely get admitted into the university. That's why it's really important to holistically work on improving every aspect of yourself and the application. Now to prepare for your application, I'm running a little bit late, look at our website. Every single question you have is answered on our website, all right? Make sure you do a little bit of research on your preferred program of study. We have open classes. Has anyone taken part of it in an open class? It's really, really an important thing you, for you to do because you see what classes at AUA are like. Know what our policies are and make sure you know the different opportunities to help you finance your education. Um, this is what our website looks like. All right. Um, so definitely right now this information is about the open house. There's a whole lot of information including the programs that we have. Let me open it. Turn them. So the programs are over there. The selection process, so all those targets I just went over, they're listed here. The application requirements, the tuition, how to apply deadlines, the frequently asked questions, flyers, and a lot more information. Okay? So go on. Is it only in English? What, what other language do we have it in? Russian, no. <laughs> Armenian. So if you want your parents to look through the website, it's completely translated. Um, okay, so I always get confused. Who can tell me? What is a fuck? I was hoping for a better reaction to that. I did not like that. I'm firing all of you as applicants. So these are our frequently asked questions. Oh, go ahead. Asa. Inzanislav Asa. Frequently asked questions. I was so excited about that joke. Charlotte even took video of me. I was, I, <laughs> the crazy art. So these are the frequently asked questions. We have more than 60 questions in English and Armenian that are going to answer every question you have about AUA. So before you write us an email, before you call us, look at the frequently asked questions, okay? Um, what else? Uh, open classes, so our student ambassadors thought this was really important for you to know. We have a website dedicated to it. Please go and learn how to register and take advantage of that. Classes run through usually end of November, early December, and then it's final season. <clears throat> now to prepare for your entrance exams, what, what, what is this word? Studi? What is that? What, what does that mean? I know, you don't, do you? What does that word mean? Applicants, come on. Study! At the store. I get the best reactions when I talk in Russian. I think I need to learn Russian. Okay, study, barapel, right? You guys really have to prepare. You don't need to spend an arm and a leg. Okay? So first is our library. It's got a lot of resources including uh, study guides for the TOEFL, for the IELTS, for the SAT, for the ACT. And as, as long as you're an AUA applicant, so this is for 12th graders only, come into our office, we see you start an application, we can help you get a membership in the library. But we also have this amazing department called Open Education that provide, uh, provides preparatory courses for um, the exams, and they're gonna give a pre presentation today. 
Ani, can I, can I go over the slides or do you want to talk? You decide. You, you will do it. Okay, so come say, everyone say hi to Ana Heat. Okay, hi everyone. I'm so excited to be here and to greet you also on behalf of the Open Education. We are located in the first floor just next to the admissions office and besides that we will have a session 245 in a PAB 213 room to be with you to explain how to get prepared for the uh, admission exams. But what is the good news? Why we have uh, shown you the map of uh, uh, Armenia? You see the highlighted points. We have uh, regional offices over there. And we want to be closer to you instead of making you come to uh, Yerevan and take the courses. Get prepared for the admission. We are coming to your places to offer you the uh, TOEFL and many, many other courses that you are wanting to take. Besides the prep courses, we do also many, many other uh, professional test preparation language courses, but you may learn about that looking to our website uh, with, uh, that uh, will be in the next slide. Arina Jan, can you just... Okay, okay, but uh, I uh, really want to uh, let you know that we are ready, we are here, with, we have uh, many professional instructors to teach you the methods and the strategies how to prepare for the test, uh, TOEFL or IELTS, uh, SAT, ACT tests to be a good applicants to AUA. Good luck to all of you. Thank you. A reminder that Open Education will have a presentation today at, I think, 2.45. So if you're interested in those courses, make sure to stop by and attend that. Um, there are also a lot of various online resources free of charge. Um, Khan Academy, Magoosh, WizIQ, um, and I'm sure there's a lot more that is not listed there. This is included in one of our FAQs, right? So if you don't take a photo or if you can't read because it's blurry, you just go look in the FAQs. Um, really quickly about tuition. So AUA practices need blind admissions. This is a really important part. We do not care if you can afford to study at AUA. So when we're looking at you as an applicant, we don't know if you're able to pay for your tuition or not, okay? So those are very different things where we don't look at. Every single dollar we receive from your tuition, 26% of it goes directly to our financial aid pool. And we have more than 10 different options available. Now, student ambos, I think the best way to talk about this is who of you has applied for financial aid? Who of you received financial aid? Who of you received 90% if you feel comfortable? 75%, 50, right? Zevaganchi, right? This is not something that a few people apply. You need to know Aruna Zorabian or Brian Ellison to be able to get, no. It's completely based on need. And we're gonna have our financial aid team uh, talk about that in a little bit. But let me scare you with the tuition rate. All right, so for all of our business students, if you have Armenian citizenship or the 10-year residency, this is also in your folders, your tuition is going to be how much? What is tuition for a business student? Scream it, tell someone, okay, that, for, that guy wants to answer. And the one where you are masking, you're best muruka hakel. Okay, well, you guys can't read, that's not a good sign. So, 2,250,000 without any form of financial aid. For all of our other programs, it's 1,700,000. And you'll notice there's a 2 million difference between 
the rate for Armenian citizens and the rate for our international students. So Louis, you're coming in with the, the international rate. That's because our donors um, understand sort of the reality and they give a two million drum subsidy to every Armenian citizen or 10 year resident before they walk in. There's also a 25,000 drum app, uh, application fee, student services fee that's paid annually um, for you to keep in mind. But as we just saw, tuition assistance in AUA is really, really strong. So we have 273 people who this past year applied for financial aid. 219 or 80% of them received something with an average reduction of 62.7%. All right, and you can see the number of people who received aid. So how many people received 90% off? 67, how many people received uh, 75? Oh, you can read when I point. How many people got 50? How many people got 25? Good, I couldn't trick you, that's good, that made me happy. All right, I think Maga is here from financial aid, so I'm gonna ask her to, oh wait, one more thing. For our international students, do I have anyone that does not have Armenian citizenship or the 10 year resident? Raise your hands. Where are you guys from? <laughs> Lebanon, Marhaba. Where else? Do I have anyone from Russia or Russian citizens? Where is he from? Chile? Ooh, I want to meet you before you go. Good. So for you guys, we do have an international scholarship. And as you can see, you have to apply for it separately. And everyone who applied for the international scholarship received it, not like our admission rate. And the average discount was the maximum of 50%, and that is completely merit-based. So, Mom John, why don't you come up, and we'll ask you to talk about financial aid. Hello, uh, welcome to AUA, dear future AUA students, parents, and guests. My name is Margaita, I'm from the Office of Financial Aid, and I'm proud and pleased to inform you a vast variety of tools and programs that AUA offers to its applicants for making their dream of becoming an AUA student come true. Shortly, we'll speak about three basic programs that AUA offers designed for our RA citizens, international students, and those who hold 10 year visa. Uh, so the um, basic program is need-based tuition assistance. We also offer academic scholarships to academically gifted students. And among other payment options, we will speak about those types of financial aid which will become available for you only after you sign your educational contract, that is, once you become officially an AUA student. So, as I already mentioned, need-based tuition assistance is available only to RA citizens. So, those who have international student status, or uh, they hold, or, or if you held a ten-year visa, you are not eligible for this program. However, we have other options to offer you. Need-based tuition assistance ranges from 25% to 90% based on the required documents, which you will be requested to provide based on your application for. The need level is assessed by the financial aid committee. The priority is given to your family's income, to your family's budget, income, expenses, uh, the value of assets that you have, and so uh, and many other factors. Here are the fixed percentages, 25, 50, 75, and 90. So once you decide on applying for need-based tuition assistance, your first step is to decide by which deadline you are planning to apply for AUA for not missing your chance of applying for need-based tuition assistance. Although admission and financial aid are processed and administered by different two by two separate offices, though there is an interrelation, correlation between the deadlines in terms of phases. If you apply for admission by early deadline, you need to submit your financial aid package to our office by first deadline. If you are applying by regular 
then you need to submit for your financial aid application by second, and the same correlation refers to rolling deadlines. So if you are applying by, uh, for AUA by early deadline, there is no way uh, that we can accept your financial aid application by second or third deadlines. There is another technique that we um, advise our applicants to, pr uh, to practice for not missing the deadline, which is the following. As soon as you send your application for admission electronically to the Office of Admission, within the next two or three days, make sure to prepare the whole financial aid package and bring the hard copy to our office for not missing financial aid deadline. So if you are planning to apply in a month, that is by early deadline, then um, you should already deliver your financial aid package to our office by December 8th. The rolling deadline date is March 9th and uh, regular deadline, March 9th and rolling June 8th. So these are deadlines for financial aid applications. And uh, typically we encourage our students to apply for financial aid either by early or regular deadline dates as by approaching to rolling deadline the funds become exhausted and there are little chances for you to get financial aid or at least higher levels of financial aid. Uh, once you set up with the deadline dates and you decide on by which deadline you are planning to apply, your second step should be collection of the documents. You need to prepare your package which should include your financial aid application which looks like this, the first slide, and then uh, the, our form consists of 15 pages and you will be requested to provide detailed information about your family's financial uh, situation including both registered income and tax income, uh, provided your grandparents live with you, information on their pension, and in terms of expenses, utility expenses, everyday expenses such as transportation, food, clothing, and so on and so forth. In case you meet any challenges while uh, filling in the form, you are free to contact us and our information, contact information is available both in the application form and also in the checklist. And you have the checklist in your packages provided by the admissions office during the registration. And the checklist looks like that. It lists all the required documents that you will be um, requested to submit together with your application form. And it, it should, like, those are the proofs that you provide to us that um, shows the claims which you included in your application form. The next step is academic scholarships. Uh, there is only one slot of a 50% AUA academic scholarship for each program. So among three colleges, we have at this point six, one slot of a 50% AUA academic scholarship. Students do not apply, apply for academics for this type of academic scholarship. The decision is made by the corresponding academic program. The priority is given to your admission scores, and in case you have an interview, it's also taken into account. And your uh, academic portfolio in general is also considered while uh, considering your candidacy for an academic scholarship. If you are selected, then the Office of Financial Aid issues you the award notification letter. International scholarships are also classified under academic scholarships because the decision on the aid level is made, again, based on your admission scores and your merit. And the maximum aid level within the program is 50%. Uh, unlike the other type of uh, academic scholarship, international students are requested to submit an application form on the NSA, and there is one combined deadline for all international applicants, irrelevant of the application phase, and it's June 30th, 2022. Uh, it doesn't matter yet, there's only one deadline for... Um, the, the procedure is like this. As soon as um, you, once you decide on applying for admission, and together with it, you can apply for, by this deadline, for international scholarship, your application form and the essay is forwarded to the corresponding academic program. Once the decision is made on your application and your uh, need level for academic scholarship, and, sorry, merit level, uh, and as soon as we learn about your admission decision, we send you the notification letter. 
So it, if you submit your application for international scholarship earlier and you are um, notified of your admission earlier, then your decision on international scholarship can be provided uh, earlier than June 30th. Among other payment options, we would like to highlight deferred payment, which is one of the most uh, significant and helpful programs for our freshmen and sophomore students. Deferments allow students to suspend up to 50% of their annual tuition and pay the balance with an extended deadline. Um, so two years, that includes two years during, uh, four years during studies plus two years after graduation. Uh, so, if we take an example for a better understanding of this payment method, and uh, let's uh, have an example of a student who is enrolled in one of our academic programs um, besides business, because the tuition rate is a bit different for business students. So, if you are enrolled in EC or PG or engineering, and your annual tuition is 1,700,000, with this payment option, you will be allowed to pay for your first year of study only half of it, that is, 850,000. The remaining half will be frozen and you will be allowed to pay it. 160,000 by the end of your first year of study, next 60,000 by the end of the second year of study, then after your third year of study, and another 60,000 after graduation. The remaining balance will be divided into eight parts and you will be allowed to cover in two months, in two years already uh, once in three months period. So the aim of this program is the following, that you, uh, we help the students to pay less during their studies and after graduation they find a job, hopefully a well-paid job, and uh, you start paying for already the degree which you have already gained. So, and student loans already become available to you at, at once you are a junior, a junior or senior student. This, are, uh, this is a joint uh, program together with Biblos Bank that offers uh, low interest loans, 5% per annum, and you can take up to 80% of, uh, of your annual tuition as a loan and pay the balance again with a very um, the very easy payment plan. Uh, flexible payment plan is another payment option. Uh, in general, all the students, when you sign the contract, have the opportunity of covering the tuition in eight equal parts, starting from September till April. With the flexible payment plan, you can uh, extend your payment period till August and your monthly payments will drop down significantly. So if you are enrolled in business program, your annual tuition prior to any reductions will be 2,250,000, and you will need to pay 281,250 per month. However, if you apply for flexible payment plan, your monthly payments will reduce till to 187,500. And the same you see for other programs as well. However, as already noted, you can apply for these uh, options once you sign your educational contract, but the deadlines are at the beginning of September. So you can approach us for those payment options already in August. Work and study is another payment option which becomes available for you after, only after you study one semester at AUA because you need to uh, have good performance, good GPA, and um, once uh, the selection process is made by HR department and by the office for which you apply, you need to look for vacancies on our web page, which is periodically updated, and apply for one. And if selected, you will be requested to sign a form by which you agree to transfer all the income received within the program to cover your tuition at AUA, if any. So, in, in case you have any questions related to the application form or the list of the requ uh, required documents that are specific to your case, you are welcome to stop to either write an email to our email address or call us at the provided phone numbers. After this session, we will be in room 304M with my colleagues to address any of your questions. Thank you. I'm back. Okay. 
Okay, so reminder about the mask competition. So if you haven't already, make sure you get on Instagram and post that because this next week, you're gonna win some nice material. Oh, Lucy and his mom is calling me, not answering that. But I love you, Alina. Okay, um, and a quick update about next sessions. So our calendar, which is online, lists every single event we have planned um, in the future, so make sure you take advantage of those. Oh, okay, so today, I actually left on my own, um, but it is very difficult because working with you, working with, par with the parents has been a privilege, so thank you. Kirsten Cho, I know you will forget the most important slide. In Chiang Kai, you have to out to the left, and you sit there. It's a gum dip of the lots in the kitchen. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do it. What? <laughs> Thank you, Yukon. Yes, of course. Let me go back to the question. My name is Serena Strong. Okay, 